This is how I mix the Laguna dry glazes. It's very important to wear a fine particle respiratory mask when working with glaze and really in your ceramic studio with cleaning or working with anything where the dust is going to collect in the air. The residue created from glaze and dried clay is very harmful to your lungs and so it's very important to protect yourself in the studio. This is the number one hazard when working in ceramics. Laguna suggests 8 to 11 ounces per pound of dry glaze. So prior to mixing 10 pounds of dry glaze, I measure out 100 ounces of water. I pour about one third of the water into the bucket, then I add the glaze, and then I will slowly add water to the glaze and then continue to mix and break it up. Some glazes have the tendency to settle on the bottom of the container very quickly. In this case, you'll want to add Epsom salts to the final mixture. I generally like to wait a day or two before doing this to really determine if it's necessary or not. Uh, but I'll add a couple tablespoons of Epsom salts at a time to the mixture and then stir it in completely. This will keep the glaze completely suspended in the water and make it much easier to remix the glaze when you're ready for uh, dipping your ceramic pieces into it. The bucket I'm using is my initial mixing bucket. So now I will use an 80 mesh sieve to transfer the glaze into its home bucket that it's going to stay in. It's very important to filter out any lumps uh, or material that may have gotten trapped in the glaze so that you have a very nice smooth, even coating. The rule of thumb for dipping glazes is that the uh, liquid should be a consistency of approximately heavy cream. Uh, my first priority is making sure that it runs through the seed quickly and efficiently. So I will continually add a little bit of water at a time to make sure that it will pour through nicely and melt all of the particles that are in the glaze. I'm using my hand during the process to um, push through any particles through the sieve so that they will all be broken up and I won't have any lumps left in the mixture. When I no longer want to add water, I will take out some of the pre-sieved uh, glaze and then mix it with any lumps that are remaining in the bucket, slosh that around, and then pour it once again through the sieve. So I'll do this process a few times to make sure that everything is very smooth and I don't have uh, very much glaze remaining in the bucket. These glazes are lead free and non-toxic and so I'm comfortable using my hands to mix them. It's very important you research what materials you're using and know that they are safe for your, uh, your hands. A wet sponge cleanup is always very important in the ceramic studio, not only with glaze but also with clay. The more you can reduce dust, the safer your environment is for your lungs. And so I always take the time to wipe everything down as quickly as possible. I don't show this in the video. I do have a bucket dedicated to cleaning up glaze. So this is a large bucket of water and I'll wring anything out like my sponge that's filled with glaze into it. I'll rinse paint brushes, rinse my hands. And what happens is over time the glaze settles into the bottom of the bucket and then I can pour the water out and then simply scoop the glaze out of the bucket and throw it away. This prevents uh, the glaze from clogging up any drains because it will settle in the, the bottom of your drain. 
here I'm repeating the process with the Dynasty Red from Laguna Glazes. I absolutely love this red. It's just bright and brilliant and very beautiful. I work with about 15 different glazes and I do have test tiles showing all the different combinations of them. Uh, I will definitely make a video in the future talking about test tiles and showing the different glaze combinations that I use. I do think that finding the right glaze consistency is a very personal thing that involves a lot of trial and error. As I said, the rule of thumb for a dipping glaze is the half and half consistency. Uh, I do like my glazes on the thinner side and I find this allows me to layer them more without worrying about them building up or getting too thick. I do use my local tap water as my water source. I've read that people prefer to use filtered water so that they can control the outcome of the glazes and make sure there's no impact from mineral deposits and things like that. And I do know that we have a lot of deposits in our water here in Julian, California. However, I've decided that as long as I am continuing to do test tiles, then I can rely on the, um, the water and its reaction with the glazes and know what I am going to get. Um, so far I haven't really seen anything different about my using tap water. Uh, I don't think that the glazes are doing anything really unexpected or different. I also chose to go this route because I want to keep my studio process as simple as possible. So if over time I became reliant on filtered water, I would always need to get that. Whereas now I have a process that relies on the water out of the tap. So for me, it's a, it's a very simple way to approach mixing the clays. At this point in the video, I don't really have much to add that I didn't say at the beginning. Uh, I will absolutely answer any questions you have through the comments. I'd like to say that I am uh, more of an intermediate potter. I'm still learning, and so um, I don't have the database of all knowledge that's out there. I'm really just sharing what I'm doing. Um, I'm so happy working in the studio, and so if I can share this with you and bring you some joy just from seeing it, or if I can help you get started on your ceramics journey, then that's the whole point of all of this. So I hope you're doing well, and thank you so much for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. Um, it's really wonderful how we can all be connected by something that we have in common and that we're excited about. So thank you. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of the video.